Good afternoon, everybody. It's the next day, and we got a lot of stuff going on today. And I'm gonna give you guys an update and show you all what's happening up here at the building site. We had to quit early yesterday. We didn't end up seeing them finish what they were doing, but they ended up getting all the trusses laid. And the reason we didn't was there was kind of an emergency at home. One of my pipes broke in my house, and water was going everywhere, and my girlfriend was freaking out, so it's kind of an emergency had to stop. So today, they started, and they pretty much finished laying tin on the roof of this barn. And I missed that a little bit because I had a doctor's appointment this morning, 30 minutes away from here. And my appointment was about 9.30 this morning. So I couldn't shoot a whole lot of that. Dad was able to time lapse and shoot a little footage explaining how this tin is and what's, what's all the cool features about it. So I'll, I'll roll that right now so you guys can get a look at them putting tin on the roof of this building. Show you a couple things they got all the roof steel on and i wanted to show you the edge of this steel that looks like it's got if i can zoom in there it's got a fabric on it that's on there for on purpose what we started doing we did it on my last barn but the ones before that we didn't have they actually put a membrane bonded to the steel so if you get heat up in the attic when it's cold if there's any moisture in the air it's going to condensate and what happens usually with roof steel is it actually rusts from the bottom side up, not from the top side down. And what that stuff is supposed to do is to keep that moisture away from the steel. It'll still form, but it'll, it'll form on that membrane and not on the steel, and then it won't rust. This is a two-part roof. In other words, it's two sheets. It's not one continuous sheet. So the top sheet closest to the peak, it does not have that membrane on it because it's quite a bit more expensive uh, to have it on there than not, but you also don't have the problems with the moisture getting on the steel as you do on the bottom side because this area right here is going to have bird wire on it, and that's so that air can go up into the attic because in the, in the cold part of the year, when we're drawing all that air through those inlets, that all has to come from somewhere. So on this side and the north side, these soffits are open so that you can get air in there. But as a result of that, when you're trying to draw air in there, if it is cold and damp, you'll get condensation on that steel. And that's one of the first places that it'll rust out. And we're trying to avoid that because we're trying to build this for longevity. And while I'm out here, I'll show you. They've gone along and they've anchored this treated two by four to the bottom. This wall will actually come out a little bit because there'll be a sheet of steel covering this whole thing. This will be bad insulation and this will be foam and that keeps our wall from sweating and keeps everybody warm. Now that they got the tin on the roof of the building, I think they're going to be moving to putting tin on the side of the building and um, they're going to start on the north and south side of the building where the curtains are and then where the fans are and then they'll come on this side wall and they'll tin that. So that's what they're gonna be working on now. It's amazing to me. We had a huge pile of building supplies that just sat there not even a week ago. And now, somehow, turned into this thing. Crazy what a bunch of humans can do together if they have a system, and they got a couple nailers, they got an air compressor. Pretty impressive. You know what they say though, teamwork makes the dream work, baby. And this is my dream, to build one of these. Brr. We need to get some insulation in here ASAP. Rocky because I am freezing and this weather is not slowing down at all. It just keeps getting colder and colder and colder. And I'm not I'm not liking it. So we're gonna get this barn heated up here in a couple weeks. All above these trusses, there's gonna be insulation. And they're gonna pump it all full insulation. It'll be nice and warm and 
the attic will be good to go. So we're back inside, I can show you. If you look up, and it's kind of hard to see, that's a roof vent that they've got on right there. So basically, there's a roof vent about every, I wanna say there's one about every four feet, and that is what we use along with that soffit on the side. So that lets your attic breathe. So in other words, you draw air in for your inlets, but then in the summertime, when you get a lot of heat in your attic and we're, we're in tunnel, we're not drawing air out through the inlets, that heat can escape through those ridge vents. Keeps your attic dry, keeps your steel from rusting. You have to ventilate that area, so that's what that's for. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take the skid loader and wherever I can get to, I'm going to pull this, I'm gonna pull this dirt back away from this two by four because they've got to screw their their trim piece, their, uh, uh, I call it J channel, but I'm probably not right. Z trim, maybe it's their Z trim. They'll screw that to that two by four and then that corrugated steel will sit down on top of it. And there's places where that dirt's too high, it's gonna be hard for them to get their drill in there. So I'm gonna take the skiddy and drag some of that dirt back. Dad's kind of sitting in the skid loader in a weird way. I wonder what he's up to. We'll check in on it. Doing what he does best. Always on the phone. I'm selling oranges. <laughs> gotta, gotta go. So that's all the stuff going on up here. They're finishing up the tin. I don't know how long they're gonna go today. I don't know how much they'll get done, but they've been working real damn hard and they're really efficient. As you guys can see, they put this thing up pretty quickly. So with all this stuff going on up here, we're having gates being dropped off today. The gates that are gonna go inside the building, we are going to have to unload them. And some of you may be thinking, why do you guys have to unload everything? If you build a house, you know, you don't unload the freight that comes to go into your new house. So why would you unload the stuff that goes into your hog building? The way it works is it, they charge you about $5,000 to $7,500 to have somebody unload it for you. So. You know, if you can save a little bit of money by doing it yourself and unloading the freight, why not do it? You know, it's a little bit of time, but it's definitely worth it. And you want to save as much money as you possibly can when building one of these. So we're going to unload these gates just like we've unloaded all the rest of the freight. And no, luckily, we don't have to put them inside the building. We just got to unload them off the truck and the people of PSI will put a, assemble everything inside the building. Same thing with the feeders when the feeders come. Yep. Okay, that works. We'll be ready for you. Oh, yep, see ya. He'll be here around three o'clock with all the gates and hopefully, fingers crossed, he shows up to the right place. We want him to show up here. We don't want him to show up at the machine shed. We don't want him to show up at any other sites that we have. Hopefully he shows up at this one. I can't believe it. He found his way. He ca he's coming to the right site. You guys have no idea how many times we've had to redirect truck drivers because they go to one site, and it's the wrong site, or they go to another site, and it's the wrong site. But this guy, he got it. He got it. So, kudos to you, man. And then you can get, you gotta go a little north of 22 to get to PSI. Right, right. they're up on the hill there. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we get ready to leave, you're on the right there. Clean, blue, shiny gates. This is the cleanest these gates will ever be. I'm just gonna take a moment and take it in. Nice. We got one pallet remaining, and this pallet is a little too heavy for the skid loader. We couldn't quite get it off there. So Dad's gonna fire up the telehandler because the Amish crew has left and they said we could use it if we needed it. So let's see if we can get it. I've never ran a telehandler. I don't even know if Dad has either. This will be interesting. Yeah, you 
about a year. First year here, and then you didn't have the home until nothing like last year. Drive in, drive out. I think this has been a bigger learning experience for you than me because you're running all brand new equipment. You learned to ran a bulldozer, now a telehandler. Amish telehandler. There's a difference. My SD card on my camera ran out of space, so I'm going old school with the GoPro. Just taking it all in right now. It's crazy to think that, you know, two months ago we started dirt work on this thing and now we have a structure and now we have tin on the roof and it, it feels like a blur in my eyes. It's just kind of crazy to me how fast it's moved and how fast they put these trusses up and all that stuff. It's just nuts. Very grateful and happy that I got this opportunity to build my own barn. I'm taking every moment in because I don't think I'll build another one for a very long time. So, you know, this is, this is nice. That being said, guys, we've got a little ways to go on the building and I'll shoot the rest of it. We're going to be putting pigs in here in about a month, first week of December. It's the last week of October right now. So over a, a little bit over a month, and we'll, we're going to be there. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning when we're loading six loads of overstocks out.